Welcome to EP Daily. Today in the show, we battle with Batman and Superman in the rundown. Plus, I hit the stage to find out more about Guitar Hero Live. And then we hunt down some monsters in the new game, Tokiden Kiwami. Also coming up, we have some classic gaming action with a look back at Metroid, Other M, and Shadowrun Returns, and much more today on EP Daily. Brought to you by EV Games. I'm your host, Marissa Roberto, bringing you the latest in everything cool every single day. Tell me, do you bleed? You will. But not till after the rundown. Things are going to be very dark when the world's two most iconic superheroes go head to head. Warner Brothers and DC have finally unveiled footage from Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. The film is a follow up to Man of Steel and judging by what we've seen, looks like it's going to be even more moody and bleak. The final film comes out next year and I'm withholding my judgment until I see it. World of Warcraft developer Blizzard is getting into the lucrative MOBA game. The studio's long-awaited multiplayer online battle arena game Heroes of the Storm will hit the PC and Mac on June 2nd, with an open beta starting May 19th. Heroes of the Storm offers team-based combat using the best characters from the Warcraft, Starcraft, and Diablo universes. And like other MOBA games, it's free to play. Blizzard has already made a killing off of its other free-to-play game, Hearthstone, so it's safe to say that this one will be a license to print money. The game actually started life as a custom mod for StarCraft II and has gone through several iterations since then. We'll have more on Heroes of the Storm before it arrives. That's it for the rundown. Now here to join me, it's Scott C. Hello. Jones. I know you're really excited about this new announcement from Blizzard because yes. you love MOBA games, number one. Well, you know, it's one. Of, this is one of the genres that I don't really understand. I don't really connect with any of the League of Legends MOBA type stuff, uh, but I am very excited by uh -huh. everything that Blizzard does. Uh, they've made so many incredible uh, landmark kind of titles over the years and, and I'm excited and, and optimistic that this will be another incredible well, landmark title. You feel the excitement because they have characters from StarCraft, Warcraft and Diablo. I mean all these characters that people know and love that they get to, get to play in this free to play game and it is free to play and I don't, I don't know how really you feel. I don't remember any of the characters in Diablo. That's probably the one game in all the Blizzard universe that I've played, spent the most time playing. Yeah. I don't really ever, I've never thought about these characters before but maybe this game will make me think about these characters and make Maybe. me develop an affinity for them. Possibly. Uh, I just don't think that you and I are into these games as much as other gamers Maybe are. Maybe we should get into them though. Uh, we could, yeah. Get are into you free the, next get weekend? Get into the MOBA scene. Uh, I'll have to clear my schedule. <laughs> okay. uh, but let's talk about Batman versus oh, Superman. Oh yes, I can't wait. I watched because... the trailer last night. Oh, you watched it last night? Yeah. Okay, Vic and I discussed this in Vic's basement because yeah. I have some problems. I don't really like that Batman and Superman are fighting at all, but yeah, you know, this know. is just part of their, their story. They need to bro down before they become friends. Bro down, I like well, that. They I don't really know what it, it means, out. but I'm, uh, I'm going to defer to you and say that do they probably need to bro down. I wish they would team up they and then fight to. somebody else, though. They're going to. It looks like they're going to fight each other. They are going to fight each other. It says in this versus one. in the title. They are going to fight each other in this one, and then they're going to bro they're going to get together. They're going to be bros okay. for Justice League. That's okay. what's going to happen. That's that's their story. That's their arc. You think the so, whole thing will end with a kiss? Maybe. Who knows? I, but the trailer was really dark. Though. Like we don't. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed that one. The trailer was really dark, and we didn't see any Wonder Woman at all. And uh, I think the reason that Zack Snyder is in charge of this too, because I, know, I hated, hated Man, Man of Steel. Steel. I did, but Vic loved it. And Vic so loved it. I hated it. We might be wrong, and Vic's right again. We oh. probably are. We probably are. Uh, okay, we should table this for yeah. a moment because we gotta go back you. To New York. We got to go back to New York. You were uh, slapping the bass. I was slapping the bass. I got to see the new Guitar Hero live, and here's my latest report. Ooh. I'm here with Jamie Jackson from Freestyle Games. They are working on the new Guitar Hero. It's called Guitar Hero Live. Jamie, tell me, what was the reaction from the team at your studio when you guys found out you're working on this game? Ah, uh, man, they were really stoked. It's Guitar Hero is such a huge franchise, right? It's such a big game, and uh, you know, even though we did DJ Hero, and that was a lot of fun, uh, this is something totally different. Uh, and I think once we said to them, look, not only are we going to do it, we want to change it. We want to think about how can we build this from the ground up. And 
and everyone just really bought into it. Diving into how we're going to change the gameplay and then turning the camera around so we could put people on stage. It was a lot of fun, so a huge amount of excitement and I'm sure they're all buzzing back at the studio today. Well, let's talk a little bit about the controller. It's a pretty special controller. You also had to step away from the standard bearer, which was the original Guitar Hero controller. How did you guys accomplish this? Ah, man, I mean, this was the tough one, right? Because Guitar Hero was that same control system for such a long time, and people had got used to it. And I think people getting used to it was probably, you know, that was interesting, but we felt like we needed to come back with something different. You know, a lot of our fans were saying, oh, yeah, we love Guitar Hero, but we just feel like we want something new. And for us, that means new gameplay, you know, a totally new way to play. It was a hard decision, it was a tough decision to come to, but we just felt five years, a big difference between when it was last out. How we got to it, we started to look at how people played, and, and a lot of people played on medium difficulty, they just used three fingers. And we saw a lot of people, you know, as soon as they had to use four or run up and down the neck, they'd get into trouble. It's not to say everybody did, but some people did, I did. Um, and then we kind of wanted to make this hand start to do shapes more like kind of in line with what this hand was doing when you're strumming. So kind of if you think about chord shapes now you can start to do. So you're starting to move these fingers more like a guitarist, but ultimately it's still a game. Right. And it's still tons of fun to play. It's not a simulator or anything like that. It's, it's still a fun game. The one thing that I noticed about the guitar, and you can see the, in the footage here where I'm playing it, it's that it's very small for me. Did you guys think about making a, an adult-sized guitar for a change? Well, you're a very large adult, so I think you're kind of, you break our percentiles, right? Whereas I'm kind of a small adult. So, um, you know, we, we, but we built this to, to hit a kind of a broad range percentile. We also didn't want it to be too big for kids. And also we only wanted to make one. We didn't want to have multiple versions. It's like, let's just make one controller. Relax, man. Guys, I need you on stage right cool. now. Let's do this! Yeah. And the thing that always looks so fun when I look at pictures of rock stars and film footage of rock stars is not only what's going on on stage, but backstage looks super fun. Is there any backstage content in Guitar Hero Live? Well, yeah, there is, without giving away too much. We wanted to give you a little taste of everything. Whatever you're picking, wherever you're going, we want there's different ways you're going to come onto the stage. You're going to see different things. So we've been lucky enough to be backstage at some gigs and see what it was like. So we wanted to just give you a little taste of what that felt like. Last question, uh, have you thought about making a game called Beard Hero? Yeah, that's something we think about quite often. Um, unfortunately, we want to kind of game for boys and girls, and we just think the girls are not going to be into it. I know some girls who probably could play Beard Hero as well as any man. And that's not the last we've seen of Mr. Jones in New York at the Guitar Hero event. That's right. When we come back, we've got classic reviews of Metroid Other M and Shadowrun Returns after this. Look, I know that Samus takes some abuse at the hands of one of her male supervisors, and it's a real drag in this game, and it doesn't represent Samus Aran very well in Metroid Other M, but I still had a really good time with this game. It's definitely a throwback to the 2D Metroid experiences, but done from a third-person action-adventure perspective. There are some camera shifts in this game. There are definitely some frustrations. This was a collaboration between Nintendo and Team Ninja, so it was a bit of a risk and it was a bit of a taking the Metroid brand back to Japan after it had a very successful run in America at the hands of Retro Studios with the Metroid Prime games. This was different than those. It's definitely not as cool as the old 16-bit side-scrollers, the best of the Metroid era, but I still had a lot of fun with Metroid Other M. I finished this title, wanted a whole bunch more. That may be one of the shortfalls, is that it's not as long as you want out of a game like this. It's very addictive, the action is solid, but it does create the impression of a weaker Samus Aran, and I know a lot of people had some issues with that. Still, I dig this game, and because not a lot of people bought it, I consider it a buried treasure. All right, so that's not my favorite bird treasure selection for obvious reasons. Well, you know, sometimes women can't do anything unless they get a man's permission first. <laughs> I'm starting to understand why your wife left you. Moving right along. Shadowrun Chronicles Boston Lockdown is coming out next week. Now let's take a look back at the Shadowrun Classic with these classics. 
We are right in the midst of this Kickstarter wave of games and technology, and today we're looking at a game called Shadowrun Returns. This was a huge success on the crowdfunding platform, but this is basically an isometric RPG. This is a throwback to an old, old oh, game, yeah. which of course we have our encyclopedic man over here <laughs> who's going to be able to talk about it back in the day. And the neat thing here is it's really built for a modding community. So this is kind of the beginning of something more to come. If you're not familiar with Shadowrun, it takes place in the 2050s. It's kind of a cyberpunk meets Lord of the Rings kind of thing. It's this high-tech world where all of a sudden one day magic came back into the world and people started mutating into elves and trolls and dragons. And so it's this really weird chocolate and peanut butter mix of Blade Runner and The Hobbit. Shadowrun Returns is made by the same guy who made the original pen and paper game, and it kind of captures the feeling of the Genesis and SNES games. It is a turn-based tactical RPG, so if you're a fan of Fallout or Fallout 2, two of my favorite old school games, you'll feel right at home here, and it's really faithful to the Shadowrun universe. I have to say, one of the best things about this game is the atmosphere. I think that the tone and the world are really, really cool. The first adventure is called Dead Man's Switch. Basically, a character dies, and upon his death, his lawyer sends out a message to his old running mate, this is you, and you have to solve the mystery of his death. The mechanics are there, but the RPG and the tactical-based stuff, they really feel challenging to me, yes. I think this is the beginning, and there's more to come. They've got the Shadowrun thing down because that is the creator's thing. I mean, he invented this universe. The descriptions are great, the locations are great, the dialogue is fantastic. There's some really good writing in this game, so it really captures the vibe. But I'm totally with you. The mechanics of the actual RPG stuff aren't quite there. It's maybe even a little simple. I kind of wish that the skill trees went a little deeper. I kind of wish the conversation trees were a little more expansive. The turn-based combat is very similar to a lot of the other turn-based RPGs. Even though it gives you the whole Shadowrun universe and the Shadowrun vibe, it doesn't bring a lot into it from a gameplay standpoint that we haven't seen. It doesn't feel RPG enough for yeah. me. And then even in the turn-based combat, most of the enemies are not that difficult to defeat. And hey, like, I'm not a big tactics guy because I'm just bad at tactical games, but honestly, this felt a little bit simple. Shadowrun has such a die-hard community of longtime fans. I'm really looking forward to what these people are going to do with the editing tools, what kind of adventures they're going to create. I got to say, just from a basic standpoint, it's a competent game. I was engaged. I think throughout. the story is really well yeah. told. Uh, you know, great. this is a great little whodunit, good caper, detective story. Yeah. I came into this completely new, and if I didn't know that there was more to come and this massive history that people want to build up, I'd kind of be like, well, is that all there is? Like, I don't know if there was enough from this to make me come back. As a Shadowrun fan, I would like to see Shadowrun Returns branch out a lot more. I want to see the next chapter. I want to see what the users are going to come up with because I feel like this universe is so rich. There is so much fertile ground to be just taken advantage of here. What are you going to give Shadowrun Returns? For me, it's a seven. Me too, seven out of 10. Oh, Stevie, Rajui, my bros. Hello, my bros. I remember when you used to love me like that. Okay, moving right along. Now listen, we have two get in for you after this. EP's mobile coverage is brought to you by GameLock, makers of Dragon Mania Legends, which you can play for free right now. I've been playing an interesting racing game on my iPhone. It's called Hovercraft, and it kind of blends my love for Wipeout, which I absolutely adore and talk about frequently on this show, with Minecraft. So you can create your own anti-gravity hover vehicle by fusing together a bunch of blocks. So it looks rudimentary, kind of blocks with blocks stacked all over them. I made a little blocky looking bat wing, of course. And then you hit the road, and the road is filled with all kinds of other traffic that will get in your way, and there's twists and bends in this rudimentary looking urban type of environment. It's not amazing, but it is pretty fun and it won't cost you very much. I'm giving Hovercraft an eight out of 10. Okay, okay, I'm always intrigued by Mr. Lucas's selection in the pocket reviews. Now it's time for Vic to be joined by a giant demon, or was that fighting giant demons? Either way, here's Vic and giant demon Jones fighting Oni in their review of Tokuden Kiwami.
A new game showed up on my desk a few days ago. It's called Tukadin Kiwami, and, and I said, thought, no, nope, well, I don't want it. Must be for somebody else. It's clearly <laughs> not for me. I do not know what this name means. I took it home. This is a, a, a mashup between uh, Koi and Tecmo. They've tried to make a game together, and I, I thought at first this was going to be, oh no, it's another Dynasty Warriors. Yeah. And it's not really. It's it's more of a monster. Hunter. It's another monster hunter. Yes, and we looked at Tukadin on the Vita before, and it was a pretty solid Vita experience. It's a pretty fun game. This one's cool because it's on the PlayStation 4 and the Vita at the same time. It's the same core experience. I played it on the PS4, you played it on the Vita. And you tasted it a little bit on the on the PlayStation I 4. I tasted it in all formats. You, you did, know, the, yes. thing, the thing that I like is the cross-save, cross-play functionality in there. I feel like they spent a lot of time trying to make that right, to yeah. get that right. Yeah. And I really appreciate that because now you can have an experience in your living room. It's not like I'm working for Sony. I know. I know. And then you can just play the same game when you leave the house and get on the bus. And this is one of those games, just like Monster Hunter is, that just goes on forever. There is a lot of grinding. There is a lot of finding weapons and crafting weapons and upgrading weapons. You find magic spirits. I think they're called uh, Mitami in here. And you fuse them to your passive abilities so you can raise your attack skills or raise your defensive skills or your replenishment skills when you're getting beat on in battle. And basically what this game boils down to is you are tasked with defeating these Oni, these giant yeah. demons. And they're pretty impressive. That's like, what's so cool about this game, right? When they come rolling out, you're yeah. just like, now what? And yeah. what's this going to look like? And then you look at the detail. It's hard not to stand with your jaw hanging yeah. open when one of these Oni comes out. And you just look at all the detail and all the all the care and time and artfulness that right. went into creating these things. And then it starts beating the hell out of you. Yeah. And <laughs> three of your pals, because yeah. you can play this thing multiplayer. Or you have AI people populating the thing with you and fighting all these creatures. There's a lot of little grunt fighting in this thing, just like there is in Monster Hunter. There's also an invisible wall. There are lots of gameplay shortcuts as well. I mean, I feel like this genre really needs a Devil May Cry of paint or polish in this yeah. thing. The combat well, connection. Some sort of style and attitude because you're right, there is something that drives me away from Monster Hunter every yeah. time, which yeah. is the clunkiness and this, I feel so uncoordinated when I'm playing this game. And you're right, I think Devil May Cry and uh, Ninja Gaiden are great examples of where I would like Monster Hunter right. and now this game to go because if we had more of that, if we had more of that free flow combat, yeah. I think I would finish all these games. Yeah, I mean, it's something we've been talking about over the course of this year is yeah. the, the remastering trend and this right. is another yes. remastering effort. And but so it's it's at least embellished with more material. Yeah, I mean if you look it's at It's like some, a 1.5. Well, you know, there were four enemies on the screen in the early version. Now there are eight. You do get an upgrade if you've played the game before. Yeah. I think you have reason enough to play it again. If you liked the game before. If you okay. enjoyed it, it's yeah, the same game though. It is. Also, if you've played a lot of Monster Hunter, you're going to feel very very familiar in here. The thing that I think that Monster Hunter has over this is that they don't take themselves quite so seriously. There's a sense of fun and lightness and a sense of humor about itself. And there's also, oh, they've done so many iterations on Monster Hunter, and now you're climbing all over the beasts and stuff like that. I miss the uh, cats that cook <laughs> cook things yeah. and make things for you. You don't have that here. You do find a cat in this damn game, yeah. though, with two tails. But everything's very hyper-serious. And it's a little silly that it's so serious, but I sure love the Oni. The Oni creatures are incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, Tukadim Kawami, I hope I said that correctly. <laughs> what are you going to give this game? It gets an eight from me. How about uh, you? It gets a seven from me. Remember, you could be slaying your own Oni now. Well, not right now. After we answer your pressing Twitter question. That's next. If you want more EP, go to our website, epn.tv, for bonus content and full episodes. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to EP Daily. It is time now for the best part of today's show. It is the Twitter question of I'm the ready. day. I'm ready. This one comes from Aaron Jackson. He's at Inked Jacks. Mm -hmm. Oh, Inked to Jack. Aaron That's a Jackson. good one. Yes, what's he got? Uh, he asked, Do you ever think we'll see Final Fantasy VII released for handheld units? He puts Vita and 3DS in brackets here. I know how much you love Final Fantasy. Uh, I do. I have a mixed relationship with Final Fantasy. I have a mixed relationship with all video games and out there. And women, for sure. Uh, but uh, Final Fantasy VII is supposedly the classic in the Final Fantasy history. And so everybody's excited. I can't believe that it's really not on the Vita or on the 3DS. I thought it was already. Yeah, that's but true. But it, it probably, if it's not on there now, and I'll double check with my researchers after today's show, uh, 
I think it will be coming soon and probably multiple times. It's probably coming to your phone. It's probably, it'll, oh. it'll be on every platform imaginable sometime in the future. No, but the 3DS is the best idea and should be in the 3DS for sure. I'm loving these big RPGs on my 3DS. It's the best way to play. But listen, EP Daily is done for another day, but you can check out full episodes, extended interviews, previews, reviews, and everything else we do all at EPN.TV. We've got more EP for you tomorrow, mm -hmm. including a look at Star Wars Rebels. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. EP would like to thank its sponsors, Nintendo, Xbox. So it's between episode three and four, yep. and Clone Wars as well, Clone Wars before this. Yeah, so it fits within the chronology, and we all know that Disney has uh, said, okay, well, all of the other expanded universe stuff that was created before, that's all gone. Yeah. So it's all a brand new canon. This is part of the canon. I like the characters. As much as I dig all of the Star Warsiness of it, the yeah. thing that I dig the most about this show is that it reminds me of Firefly. It reminds me of the the smallness of the, this crew stuck on one ship, yes. going on one, you know, one adventure after another, mm -hmm. splitting off into different teams and groups. Well, and that's what the show is. <laughs> for children, this is for Disney XD, mm -hmm. but adults can enjoy this too. I feel like even more so than the children because yep. there's a lot of intrigue here. There's a lot of politics happening that you need to get involved in or need to wrap your head around. Yep. And there's this kid that is so interesting because he's got all of this wonder and excitement, but he's got the force, it's, it's strong within him. And the angst, because the he's angst. got a, a pretty dire backstory. Yes. You're also gonna see a lot of obvious connections to past Star Wars characters. Lots of little cameos will appear throughout this. Sure. And the thing that I always have a problem with with other Star Wars stuff that isn't from the films, mm -hmm. And this even happened in the movies, is that they echo the best parts of Star Wars over and over and over again. Yeah. I'm a bit done with it's not my fault, you know? <laughs> or I've got a bad feeling about this. Sounds like someone I used to know. <laughs> <laughs>